Ooh, hey everybody. What a mess. I sent Greg a link. I know nobody's here yet. <clears throat> I sent Greg a link. see here maybe he'll maybe he'll get it nobody's in here i don't know what was different about the chat unless chat with everyone in the studio Let's see if I had it. That's something I did, I think. Let me get my phone. So, hey, blue eyes. <laughs> we we had be patient with me. We had a uh, thirty minute show with my buddy Shelby, and the chat would not work because I had it. I, it was my fault, and y'all know I'm just learning this. I've got Greg trying to come in. Hey, Wendell. Hey, I, I saw where you were trying to get in touch with me. I couldn't. I had my phone and everything going on. Um, this, um, I'm sorry about that other y'all. I'm, I'm learning. So Greg should be coming in, I think. Let's see. Hold on. This is Spencer. Uh, can somebody, let's see. Hold on. Did you see it? Okay, thank you. I'm showing we've got three in here now. <laughs> Growing pains. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Like, you know, spit in front of everybody. Well, yeah. Okay. That, how you doing, Greg? Can you hear me? Man, it's done. It, I, I had everything messed up. I don't know what was going on. I had the check. It was me. I had, hey, there's Misty. Uh, Misty, uh, Spencer's looking for us and he can't find us. <laughs> Y'all, um, yeah, there was my fault on the comments. I had, I had private chat or something messed up. I don't, I don't know what it was. I don't know. But anyway, um, was Misty coming in here with us? She can. I mean, I didn't know. Yeah, it's no. I would like to. I would like to try like different. Uh, I've only done two at one time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that would be. Hey, Misty, you want to come in here? She probably ain't got her war face on. <laughs> she can. She, no, I mean. All right then. Well, I ain't yeah. tell everybody. I ain't tell everybody. I ain't got no prettier since the other day. <laughs> I, I appreciate you coming in here. It's, it's a. Oh, uh, man. It, uh, this is stressful. Not being a tech person and trying to figure out all this mess. It's, it, you know, and, and with Shelby, um, he only had 30 minutes and, and, and he's, he's one, he's legitimately, he, he's wanting to learn. Yeah. And, uh, he, uh, Hold on. Well, saw the a beast is having a show right now. I got their alert. Did they? Yeah. I, I hate I to think that's right. I think maybe Bama. I don't know who what he's got going on tonight. I don't I don't know. Okay. Thank you, Misty. Yeah, I saw yeah, Bama was doing that. I like um I like listening to Bama. Uh, you know, a lot of people that's not from around here, um when you know, me and you will give details in a story. It irritates some people, but I mean, it. You talking to hunters? 
<laughs> we're going yeah. we're going to give you every little detail, you know. I've been I've been cursed with being able to pay attention and like I figure if I'm going to tell a story, I might as well paint. I try to paint the picture where everybody sees what I'm, what I'm remembering. You know, I, I, I mean, it's kind of like if you, uh, like if you're watching a car wreck, you can't have too much information. You, you need all of it you can get. And that's kind of the way with these things. And when you have, when you have things happen to you that I've had happen to me, it's scorched in your brain. I mean, it's, it's scorched. Yeah. Uh, it's just absolutely crazy. Uh, I mean, my wife, I mean, most everybody in chat, she's one of, she's, she's at a volleyball game. My baby girl, she's got volleyball tonight and I couldn't make it. I wound up having some stuff. I just couldn't get loose. And it was about an hour and a half or a little over an hour to the ball game. And Wanda's there. So she's right now they're playing. So she's not even seeing anything going on with this, but Wanda got her a little shake up here Monday, Monday. Yeah. I'm going to wait until this, uh, maybe Sunday, but I'll go ahead and, break the ice here there'll be a bunch maybe sunday it ain't hurt it but yeah well they uh, ain't, ain't nobody watching this Greg. you can go ahead <laughs> oh yeah they they some of them in here they some of them in here some of them, they several of them on here that i went ahead and uh they several of them i didn't went ahead and sent them messages a few of them i've talked to on the phone i've talked to joe parker and a couple more but uh wanda we going out the door right here uh monday evening i'd hobble down the off the porch and got to the vehicle and she was coming out behind me, took her a few minutes, and I'd got down to open the door and was fixing to get in the car. And she was up here and she said something to me when I opened the door. I was 20, a little over 20 feet from her. And uh, she said, you want me to lock the door? And believe it or not, where I live, we don't have to lock the doors. I said, I'm going to be gone a few hours. So I'll, I'll be back later, late tonight. I said, just go ahead and lock it. Well, I reached in. There was some, I can't remember. It seemed like it was a notebook, or I think it was one of my receipt books was laying in the in the the seat. Well, me on one leg because I got this cast on. I'm hanging on to the door, and I reach in, stick my head in the car to flip that out of the out of the driver's seat, and I hear mumbling, and it was pretty loud, and it and it was more. I think about it, it was it was deep. Well, I'm pretty used to Wanda mumbling at me anyway. I think sometimes she don't think that I deserve her to expel enough air to like <laughs> make it vocal. Yeah. And she's the world's worst. If we're in a car, she'll turn her head away from me. And it's, I get like Charlie Brown's teacher. And I heard <laughs> what I heard was, it was like, blah, 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 blah. and I jerked my head out. And I'm, I'm kind of mad because I think it's her typical mumbling. And I said, what? And she looks at me and she's like I said, say 20 or so feet from me. And she's standing between the storm door and this big door. And she's just looking at me with this weird look on her face. And she said, I didn't say nothing. I said, yeah, you did. I heard you. <laughs> and she goes, no, that wasn't me. And she's shaking her head. That wasn't me. I heard it too. That wasn't me. And you can tell by the panic that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Her you. eyes, her eyes was about that big. And she said, what do I do? What do I do? She said, do I need to go back in? Do I need to go back in? I said, no, just, just stay still a second. And I start looking down the end of the cabin into the woods. That's where it had to have come from. And I asked her, I said, where did it come from? She said, I don't know. It was echoing under this metal roof on the porch and this door. And she said, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, I knew it came from toward where she was. So it had to be had to be at the end, you know, I'm at one end of the, of the cabin and she's about in the middle at this door and it had to come from the end. Well, that's the end where my 500 gallon propane tank where we found tracks behind where I know they come up behind it or out the end right here in the edge of the woods in the woods. I mean, I got trees within eight foot of the end of the end of the cabin. So they're right there, but she, uh, she had the, the most puzzled, like, like, if she had thought of her butt, she'd shit her pants. <laughs> I mean, she she just absolutely she had to had to look. And I said, Well, just hold on. I said, just I said, let me look. And I looked for a few minutes and I'm just looking and critiquing everything. See, I said, all right, I said, just come on down the ramp. And I, I've got a ramp instead of it's like a 16 foot long ramp instead of steps, and it comes out right to the end of the, the cabin. I said, just come on down the down the ramp and just walk around behind me and get in your car and turn around and leave. 
So that's what she did. She got there. She, I'll take that back. She got there where I was and she stops. And she's like, look like a chicken watching a June bug jump back and forth. I said, what are you doing? Why? Will you see anything? I said, get in your car and leave. Uh, uh, okay. So she gets in her car and backs up. Well, when she backs up, I knew I was going to get griped out from Troy Allen if I didn't do it. And I thought, well, so I whistled just a monotone whistle, just, just a, and I just held my hand up and I've done this. Just eased my hand down. I stood there a few more minutes and nothing, didn't hear nothing else. Didn't see nothing else. I got in the car and left and I had to go to a fire department meeting. We have a meeting every Friday night, but it was right before dark. I mean, it was about, 10, 15 more minutes of daylight outside. But that was this Friday. I mean, excuse me, this Monday. And the Friday before, like last Friday, we could go tomorrow. That's when Al stepped out on the same porch and he heard three growls. And then I talked to him last night. I said, are you sure that that was all three was growls? He said, well, yeah. And I told him the way that down. I said, look, that thing mumbled. It's like it mumbled at us. And he said, the more he thought about it, he said, well, you know, like the first two that he heard, he said, it, it may have been more like a kind of a mumble. And the, he said, but I'm telling you that last, the last thing it did, he said, it was a growl. And when I, y'all, I'm telling you, I was sitting in this chair and he, he had the big door open. So the glass door was, I could see him. Well, I was <laughs> talking to Troy, I had Troy on speakerphone, phone laying right here. And uh, I heard the door open. I looked. Well, he was coming through the door, but he was backing. He, he he wouldn't turn his back outside and come in the door. He backed through the door and he shut the glass door. And he was like looking. And he's like, that SOB's right there. He didn't leave. He, he's right there. He's right here, right behind that gate. He's, he's right there in the woods, right behind this gas tank. I said, what are you talking about? He said, I just got growled at three times. So mm -hmm. he's, he's pretty tripped out about that. So hey, everybody probably heard us talking about it the other night. We was on late and. But yeah, it, but I hate wigged him out when we went, you know, we went out to supper and ate last Friday night with my, my brother and sister-in-law and we got up sure enough. He, he came around my truck and I done got up here and he stopped me. I said, what is it? He said, man, I heard something step right down there a couple of times and he pulled his light out and shined it. And he's like, Oh shit. Oh, sh I, heard, I, heard, I, I see its eyes. And I said, what color? Are they? They're red. They're dark red or, or orangish red. I said, what's it doing? He said, just stand there or just, they're just still. And then he goes, it just blinked. I said, well, just see what it's doing. And then here in a second, he like looks at me. And when he looks back, he goes, it's gone. I said, well, get your ass up here and unlock this door so I can get inside. I'm on crutches. <laughs> Have, is that the first time you've ever heard the, at your place, the, the mumbling? The mumbling. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. the first time I've ever heard mumbling here. Ever, you, ever. You think, you think you get you got one getting a little comfortable coming up there? Oh, where you're not. At? I mean, he'd go do his thing, I'll do mine. But I'm telling you, y'all, these things, I've got no no trust with them at all. None. I mean, people people harp about the friendly forest people and stuff. No. Uh -uh. Yeah. Um. That you know, I mean, I might make some people mad or whatever. Um. But that that's the that's the difference in people that's doing a lot of reading and watching shows and you know when you smell you smell it, these things or you know even, even the smell puts you on alert as a, as a hunter and you know you're not supposed to be smelling what you're smelling yeah uh, you know and that's just a little part of it um you know the some of the stuff that's happened to me and peyton has scared the crap out of me nothing near what's happened to you and, and other people we've talked to yeah, it, dude, it it'll get your attention when these things, when they when they're belligerent, and when I the word belligerent, it ain't even a strong enough word. I mean, it, when they go crazy, I'm talking about crazy. It 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 absolutely. And when I tell people that I've had them come in and they are annihilating everything around them, it's like, I mean, it's like a. a a 1500 pound toddler that that's just destroying, throwing a temper tantrum and it's shredding everything around. It. It's breaking limbs. Limbs sound like rifles going off. 
and they start huffing and grunting and growling and that we're just like the screaming and roaring out of it just just the the huffing and dude i've heard these things and the only thing i can attribute the sound to was like somebody pounding up like like a deep not really a drum but it, it was like like it's what i pictured was like a gorilla beating its chest and it would just go blah 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 and it would huff and it would grunt and it would carry on and it break limbs and it would stomp. And the thing was what, what was weird. I've had them do it several times. They won't just stand in one little spot and do it. It's like they'll pace back and forth and pace back and forth. And like, they're just working their self up. You but know, they, you know, we, we've heard that in other stories, even with Mike's story, he said it's when it was um, agitated or whatever, it walked in the oval kind of in the oval and looking around and, and uh, you know, my mom and dad, when, when they had that one uh, where they stopped on that road that night, uh, I don't know if they interrupted something or just irritated, whatever it was. And it started breaking stuff. And, and he, daddy said it was just crashing, you know, not huge trees, but you know, yeah. you, you know, a tree of that big around, it sounded like a, 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 it's not like a 22 going off. Oh, just cr that crack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, he didn't know it was on two feet until it, jumped off of that bank and landed in the road and went boom boom and mm. so whatever they did that night it they wasn't welcome there you know and i've been lucky enough uh to not experience a, a lot of that but that that one time where we did make something mad the, just now when you try to explain to people uh when something, when something lets air out and, and kind of does a huff growl and, and it makes you feel small, it's, you know, you, you, you know, you know, that deep down that yeah. you're not going to mess up, you know? Yep. And it was, it was, it was so, it was so mad. I, I didn't, I was like your wife. I didn't really know what to do, but I had to stay calm. And so it, you know, I, I, I appreciate y'all. I just can't wrap my head around having to step out and I do it here. I live in a small country town and I, at this just what I do. I take the dog out to the yard. I'll look out both ways, each corner of the house. It's just a habit. You need to. Yeah. And I'll look both ways and then we'll walk on out. And it's just something I've been in a habit doing. My mom, and dad had a store. When I was growing up and, and idiots thought we took money home. Now, I don't know why anybody would do that, but they would come around. My dad wasn't there. And, you know, my mom was pretty good, pretty good shot. <laughs> and uh, she wasn't scared. And she yeah. put she put a couple of the would be, you know, thieves on the road. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, and we were we were broken into uh, when I was about 10, maybe. And that changes a lot of things. You know, yeah. you don't. You, oh, I I know how it is living out in the country. I mean, that thing about it, dude, I, you know, if you call, if you call 911 right now, right here where I'm sitting, it'd take 20 minutes for somebody to get here probably. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. the reason I, I'm an advocate. I, I get so sick and tired of people acting like law enforcement wants everybody to be unarmed. I love mm -hmm. armed, good armed people. I love them. I, I want everybody to be armed. Because here's the deal. Me, law enforcement. I'm a second responder. I hate being labeled a first responder. Right. Because the stuff doesn't happen before I ever get caught. Right. I mean, I, I'm the second dude there. The, the victim was the first one here. Right. Them and the criminal, they was here together. So, yeah. I mean, odds yeah. are, I, I can kill myself trying to get there, and I may not be able to do nothing but write down what happened. Right. And, yeah. and we, we, our store, was, uh, so you know I-65. Yeah. Coming up, so you go 22, exit 22 was the um, Tennessee and truck stop. Then you had a dead exit 27 and 32 is where we were at for 28 years. Little Exxon there on the right. And uh, we were shell early years ago, years ago. But I'm going to tell you right here and right now, if if we hadn't been armed and known what we were doing, and we still, there's people, and, and we also knew that, uh, we had to be on alert because there's people a whole lot better than you out there too. 
Yeah. What they do. They're so, professional criminals. It, yeah, and if we, if we hadn't have been armed and aware, aware first, I wouldn't be here. My son wouldn't be here because I'd been gone a long time ago. You know, my mom and dad, you know, they, they wouldn't have made it. Um, I could tell, you know, we talk about life stories. I don't know how many times the hammer was cocked in that store. Yeah. And that's when it's serious. You know, when you have to, um, and, and then when you have that evil SOB that looks at you like you don't care that it's cocked on him. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really serious. And uh, uh, well, I could tell from, you know, I could tell some stories um, and I just, I just feel blessed to have made it out of that. I, I worked at the Ferris department for two years, dispatcher jailer went riding with the guys. They were, you know, they were teaching me things. Yeah. You know how that goes. Oh, yeah. um, I was the, the most dangerous job I ever had in high school. I was a pizza delivery guy. And that, oh, wow. that, that places I had to go in, I have a couple hundred dollars on me in my pouch, you know, yeah. uh, unharmed. Um, scared me to death i had a one time i knocked on the door and this is an apartment and this guy opened the door and he had a, a shoes blue jean cut off short and a, a big knife on his side and on the in the back back there there was a table full of pills dust you name it right yeah and he had a cut across his abdomen probably was from five or ten years prior to that and uh so I I look in the room and I see everybody sitting around and he looked back and he he saw that I saw what they had. He looked at me. He said, uh, is that pizza free? <laughs> and I was like, sir, if it's up to me, yeah. But if I give it to you, I got to pay for it. And I don't make enough to do that. That guy gave me a $20 tip. He laughed. Wow. So, and I, but because I acted calm. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, he just, he did his thing. And uh, but that that store, uh, you know, we ever get around a campfire and can tell some stories. It's and it ain't it ain't bragging. It, it's terrifying. Yeah, it's a true true life experience. It's just like you're like me. You've lived an eventful life. A lot of people don't live those lives. <laughs> they don't. I mean, they just don't. Dude. No, but I'm the guy that went out when I was I, I was probably 275, 280 pounds at that time. The word got out, you know, a small community, Alabama, the word travels pretty fast. If they strangers in the neighborhood been coming around there too, you know, that word get out. Right. Well, I ain't bashing nobody's religion. More power to them. It's just, right. I don't need them invading. If I want them, I'll go to them. Right. But we had some Jehovah Witnesses coming through the community. That done made a graceful appearance at a few people's houses around the area. And this was a few years, several years before I was in, even thought about law enforcement. And, uh, I was at home one day. I just got in from work and I went in and fixed to take a shower. And I heard my dog barking outside. Well, I went and looked and there's this little old four door car, pretty nice little car pulled up. See these two dudes in it, had on their little dress shirts and all. And they got out and they were standing at the end of the porch and they were scared of my dog. They wouldn't come. And I, my house, I got a big old house and I got a porch that goes all the way across the front. It's ranch style, two story. And my porch or my door to the living room is right in the middle of the house. Well, I'm looking, I've done stepped in the living room and I'm in my, my fruit of loom whitey tidy. So you can imagine this picture, you know, that time I just had a pretty good goatee. I didn't have a full beard, but here my, I am in all my glory with my whitey tidy fruit of the looms. And I just reach over and I always keep three feet, seven, three feet, seven is my go-to. Now I've got nines and 38s and, and 45 ACPs and 44 magnets, but three feet, seven, when the world goes to crap, oh, Greg gonna have one of them and probably both hands. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I just reach over the table by the door and I, a Smith and Wesson six inch barrel. I mean, big chunk of us made stainless steel in there. I thought, well, we're going to give these old boys a treat. We're going to see how bad they want to spread their religion. Well, here I am in all my glory in my whitey tidies. I just swing the door open. I step out in the middle of the porch in my underwear, holding a big shiny three feet seven magnum, just add it down to my side. I said, I help y'all. The old boys didn't know whether to shit or fall back in. They didn't know what to do or what to say or where to go. They didn't have a clue. And uh, I said, uh, what y'all want? Sir, we was here to, to talk to you. I said, I, I said, y'all witnesses. Yes, sir. 
I said, I, I don't need y'all. I don't, I don't need y'all here speaking to me. I said, look, I said, I'll tell you what you do. I said, if y'all come back up here to Baptist church and meet with me on Sunday and set through, set through church with me when church is over, I'll listen to y'all. Sir, that's not our belief. I said, well, y'all's you belief mine's different. And we'll just agree to disagree. And y'all just need to go right back out that driveway. Both of them like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and they back, they wouldn't even turn their back to me. They backed to the car and got in. And boy, they, they went up the driveway with a cloud of dust. I never did have, I, I don't know if they marked me off the, the national registry to go visit or what, but I've never had another one visit my house. I I had a had a guy uh, that lived about a mile up from up a uh, road past our store, and we knew him, and uh, we knew him well. And he had a big log looking house and a shop he built cabinets in and everything. And this guy, I knew he'd been waiting on the phone guy, and he had a hard to find house, probably like yours, you know, way back in the middle of nowhere, on this lane, and. Um, we like messing with each other, you know, we're friends and stuff. And uh, so this guy come in, he said, Hey, you know where so and so lives? And I'm like, uh, uh, yeah. I said, You ain't got to go up there, do you? <laughs> <laughs> he said, Uh, well, yeah, I'm, 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 you know, here to fix his phone. I said, Daddy, because he, he jumped right in on the story. I said, Come here a minute. This old fella right here got to go up and see uh, so and so. And, and and the guy just told us, if y'all see the phone man, so we'll tell him where I'm at. I'm like, all right. So I was like, he's got to go up there and see him. Daddy's like, oh, my God, you got to go up there with that crazy son of a gun? <laughs> said, what do you mean? He said, yeah, that guy, he's private. He's got two Rottweilers back there. He's a nutcase. He said he'll, he'll come out. He'll have, he doesn't seem what he was wearing. He said he'll have gum shorts and brogans on. And he'll come out <laughs> hollering and screaming. He'll sick them dogs on you. And ain't nobody goes back there. He's man, I, I'll say a prayer for you. Something like that, you know. <laughs> we pointed him the way. Oh no! About thirty minutes later, here come here come that guy that we you know that needed the phone. He come in. He was looking around. He said, "Y'all seen that crazy ass phone guy?" <laughs> 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 like, yeah, we sent him up to your house earlier. Why? He said, "I was over at the shop. I wasn't at the house. I come right out. Hey, I'm over here." <laughs> oh God! <laughs> he jumped in his truck and kicked rocks. <laughs> And we were laughing like, uh, oh, yeah, we kind of told him that you were, <laughs> nuts, you know, but I mean, but we, we grew up like that, you know, um, just, just some of the stuff that we've done is, you know, that you had to be there for that one probably, but it was funnier than stuff happened in the movies, you know, oh, and, yeah. and it would be like at the store. You've heard this mil military guy say this. It was long hours of uh, boredom interrupted by sheer moments of terror and some funny stuff sprinkled in between, you know. Oh, I'm telling you, dude, that this like the old saying, the, the only reason that I am old and wiser <laughs> is because the Lord took care of me when I was young and stupid. Yep. That's yep. the only reason. Y'all, yep. we've done crazy stuff. We never did do mean, like, harm other people tear up other people's property or stuff you know we didn't do that but now if it was fun and we could get off and, and pull a prank on somebody you dad gum right i mm -hmm. mean that's i get thinking about like right now i mean we're we're fixing to enter anybody i don't know about all these other states but alabama especially north alabama we everybody talks about the holidays you know can't wait for halloween thanksgiving christmas new year's shit ours kicks off with yard rolling season that that's mm -hmm. what we got here my my buddies, you know, they were the type of, you know, I was the idea guy, and I finally had to realize, like, no, I need to shut up because they're gonna end up getting killed or somebody's gonna get hurt doing some of this stuff that I'm talking about, and then I feel guilty. You know, talking about uh, Halloween, there was a guy across the road. My buddies, they're older than me, a little bit older, and uh, so they started drinking beer legally earlier than I did. And um, there was a guy across the road made a mat. He said, "I'm gonna tell y'all what." He said, I'm going to stay up all night. Y'all come over and mess around my yard. I'm going to have some rock salt in my shotgun, and I'm going to tear y'all's little tails up, you know. Yeah. So they get over there sipping on beer and wait, and they they watch. They're up in a, a upstairs apartment, and they see him turn his light off. They didn't go roll his yard. They got the tools. They crawled up under his truck, under his truck and took his dry shaft out and put it in his shed. 
Golly. Stayed up all night and waited on him to start that truck. <laughs> well, yeah. Man, we, we, had a, we had a teacher. We had a teacher moved here from a, from a neighboring school. <laughs> and she was tough. Now she was tough to get along with. And I'm talking about, she, she was just really hard to, she was hard for anybody to like this woman. <laughs> well, she kind of grew on us a little bit, but there was a couple of the old boys we hung out with. She didn't like them a whole lot. And they didn't, the feeling was mutual. Well, we decided one, one time we was going to go roll her yard. She kept talking about how nobody could roll her yard. Nobody could roll it. Nobody could roll it. Well, there's about eight or 10 of us. We all ganged up. Uh, and for people that never bought toilet paper in bulk, if you buy a true case of toilet paper, there's 96 rolls in a case. Yes, sir. <laughs> we put four and a half cases of toilet paper on the same yard. Four and a half. <laughs> Y'all, we, we're talking about 450 or so rolls of toilet paper on the same yard. She had these big oak trees in this yard, and it set off the road probably 250, 300 feet. It looked like it come a, a four inch snow in her yard the next day. And uh, she was talking about that. And then she was going to find out who done it, which of course nobody ever ratted nobody out. And we just chuckled about it, but it got on. And one, one boy that was, he was in my class, our senior trip, senior trip. And this wasn't long after we'd rolled the yard. Well, it was on out in the spring. So it was a few months. We went on a senior trip and they carried us to six flags over Georgia. Well, we had to ride the dad gum big yellow banana bus over there, hot burn up. Well, that teacher, she is, she is kind of dating a little havoc on a couple of boys. It was, uh, in my class. Well, this one boy, he hated her. He hate, I'm talking about absolutely pure hatred for this woman. Well, he's sitting in the back seat of the bus. You know, the cool kids ride in the very back. Now, by God, that's where we're sitting. We was in the last seat on the pasture side. <laughs> Well, he had, I never will forget this. He had a Mountain Dew, a glass Mountain Dew bottle. This would have been spring of 92. He had a glass Mountain Dew bottle. We was in the bus. Now look, the teacher, she was one of the chaperones. She was a chaperone on the bus. There was like four teachers and then the bus driver. This woman was in the front of the bus and the boy that was riding in the seat with me that didn't like that teacher, his mother was a teacher also when she was in the front of the bus. So they're sitting in the seats right behind the bus driver. We're going up through there and we had to go on this, this U S highway right by that teacher. He didn't like, we went right by her house going to hit I 65. He said, we're nearly at old so-and-so's. He, he had some choice words, what he called her. And I ain't going to say it here. He said, we're nearly at her house. I said, yeah, right up here. He said, let that window on down. And the window was just cracked. Cause the air was just beating me in the head. <laughs> I dropped that wind all the way down and I'm not kidding you. This boy hangs from both arms and his head out the window. And when the bus went by her, her driveway, he come out with that bottle went whoop and took the mailbox plumb off the post. Just, I mean, cut it off the post, knocked her mailbox off the post and her on the same bus. We were on, <laughs> we got, we got back, we got back to school that evening. And like the next day, she come in talking about how somebody had tore a mailbox up. And I thought, lady, if you only knew, you was riding on the vehicle, the same bus. But he, he sure did. He knocked her mailbox completely off the post with a glass Mountain Dew bottle. It, you know, how old are you, Greg? I'll be 50 in April. I'm 52. It sounds like we grew up around some of the same type of people because I mean, oh. if there wasn't a lot to do, we made stuff to do. And I remember you talking about toilet paper. Uh, there was a big old house in Mooresville, uh, looked like a plantation home, like it probably was called Marymount or whatever. And then there was other houses, and we would we would take it easy on people, you know. And we didn't have a whole lot of money to buy toilet paper anyway. But uh, we were we were getting it, you know. We had there's this one guy. He was known for being a cheapskate, and he was probably 85 years old at this point. And we said, hey, let's go get Bob's house. So it's a small house. And we're we're wrapping this toilet paper around here, and there's th me and two other guys. And I'm running wide open around through there, and I got mine going, you know. And I'm like in the dark there, and I'm like, wait a minute. She's supposed to be three of us out here. Who's that up? Uh. Bob was following us, wrapping that toilet paper up. He was saving it. He was running. We were passing him in the dark. The dangest thing you're talking about them using rock salt. 
be rolling the yard. And one of your buddies is about 15, 20 foot from you. And you look over and you see him cock back and throw it. Yeah. That roll of toilet paper couldn't have been 15 foot going up. And the guy that owned the house shot it just like he's shooting quail. That roll of toilet paper obliterated. You talking about kids scattering, son, we, we was gone. We we were running through one of the yards one night, pitch dark, and I never had been up there on that property. And they just expected it from us because we didn't do too bad, of, you know. We were running wide open and not couldn't see nothing. We were looking at the house. The doors on this place are huge. One of my buddies was, I don't know, five, ten yards over to my left, and we're running through that yard, and we didn't know it. They had this big-ass uh, – Koi pond. Oh, mate. <laughs> Deep. I was going swimming. He really plumb off in there. <laughs> mm. But yeah, and and it got kind of, it got kind of, um, it, it got kind of, they were doing a little too much because they wanted to top the year before. And yeah. They, the, the older guys started moving. Uh, like they took one guy's rock fence and rebuilt it across the road. And yeah, so they kind of had to stop doing that because they got the police involved with that one. But, but we, you know, we stayed out in the woods. I'm, uh, I'm sure like y'all did. Oh man, that we used to come down here right, right, right here where my man cave is. This is back, you know, 90, 1990, 91, 92. We used to come down here and camp under this bridge. There's a big concrete bridge over this river. We'd drive around, drive up underneath it. And park, we'd build a fire up under that bridge and, you know, stay that night or two nights or whatever. Yeah. And uh, we, uh, we was down here. I was telling some more folks about this the other day. We was laughing about it. One of those boys, it was, we all hung out, you know, I hung out with a lot of guys that was older than me and everything else because it's a small school. You know, you didn't have no choice. You either hung out with three or four people. You hung out with people older and or younger. Yeah. But there was about 10 of us. We camped out under this bridge. I was 16. This boy, he was 18. He was two years ahead of me. Well, they was, like I said, probably 10 or 12 of us. And it got down, got, I'm talking about like midnight, one o'clock in the morning. We'd, we'd got bored, you know, we'd you normally sit under there and cook so many hot dogs. And, you know, we'd done slipped off and one of them's brother was older and got a smile call and everybody's a little tipsy. And they got up here in the road, got up here in the highway big long straightaway comes down this hill and goes back across across this bridge and then way up from one side to the other it's probably a mile and a half and it's just straight you see forever one of those boys gets up here and he writes his name in the road with a jug of gasoline <laughs> well i'm talking about letters like 20 foot tall <laughs> and we hear a car coming and it's 18 wheeler coming around the curve. Well, this old boy throws a match down on it and it will be cursive writing his name. Just woof, 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 woof. And this big truck, I know I had to freak that guy out. Cause you, you hear him getting on the brakes and here in a minute, he's coming, getting closer and closer. And he just nails it. He goes through all these, this flames, you know, six foot high and goes on. Well, we're up there and pedaling around and the fire finally goes out. Well, these two old boys and this one boy that I'm talking about, he was two years older than me. And then this other boy was a year younger than me. Them two's over there and they've decided that they're going to steal this road sign. State of Alabama road sign. And it was like, said like construction ends or whatever. And it was one of those, it was rectangle shaped. You know, it was say two foot tall and probably three or four foot long, you know, like in construction. Right. It had two posts, one on each end. Well, apparently the one post they wiggled and wobbled and plucked it out of the ground. Well, the other post, I don't know if they drove it through a rock big as a couch or refrigerator or what, but these boys is pushing and pulling and tugging and wiggling and pulling up on it. And they ain't, they can't get it to budge. Well, they come up with this big master plan that we'll take this post that's loose that the one that's loose and the one that's in the ground, we'll just wind it around and around and we'll, you know, we can pull on it and break it loose. Well, I'm standing over at the edge of the road about 20 feet from them, me and a couple more boys, and we're just laughing at them, telling them they're stupid. Well, this one boy, he's, he's done handed her. They went round and round a couple of times, and he'd pull it and then hand it off, and the other boy would carry it back, and he'd catch it. And they mm -hmm. wound this down. They're thinking, because it's dark as dadgummit, you can't see hardly nothing, very little bit moonlight. 
and they're thinking that this post in the ground is is spinning yeah. and it's gonna break it loose oh no uh-uh no that narrow sign is coiling up like a big spring on the top yeah, yeah. well it gets around to that boy on the other side and he is laid back i mean pulling everything he's got <laughs> One of them other boys, he's lookout, you know, watching for cars. And top of the hill, you see the trees start lighting up. So there's a car coming. He screams, car. Well, the old boy's tugging on that thing. He just turns her loose. Mm. Well, when he did, <laughs> you know how them posts that they use they ain't round. They're, they're kind of weird shape, like right. kind of a C shape. Yep. And then flare it out. And they got all those holes in them. All them holes sound like about 300 flutes blowing when that thing whistled around. And it was like, Wee! Blow! and you could hear this thing ring like a church bell. But where it hit that old boy that was over, it hit him right, right here, oh, right across no. the forehead. Oh, no. And it looked like you took, it looked like the Hulk hit him with a ball bat. And he flies, pulls him off of his feet. And he flies through the air in the arch. And first thing hit was the back of his head and his shoulders. And he's like bouncing across the gravel. Well, me and the other boy was standing there. One of the boys was with me. We run over there to him. Well, we got to get him off the edge of the road. So I reach down with my arm and I catch him under his arm. And the other boy gets him on the other side. And we just take off running. And his heels are dragging. We drag him off offside of the road. And it's a big concrete ditch just a valleyed out ditch. We run down in there with him and like laying down and he's moaning. He's, uh, and I'm looking, the car goes by and you know, we're all down and the car gets by us. And I like look over at him and I realize it's like, what is this? There's some black all over my, my arm. Or what is, and it's on my shirt. It's black. I said, it's wet. What is oh, this no. on me? About that time, one of the boys flips on the light. Well, that black went from black to red. Did it blood? Oh, I'm down about blood. Just my arm is covered. My shirt's covered. They whip a light over on him, and he's laying there uh, in his scalp. Oh, from right here all the way across is wrinkled Feel. up back here like my hands. It's just wadded, and you can see his whole skull. His skull like a skeleton oh. skull. <laughs> And we're looking at it, and the blood just going blah, 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 just pouring. <laughs> One of my boys reaches up over his hand and goes, and just pushes it, like shoves it back in place. And another old boy takes his T-shirt off, and they wad it up, and they got it wrapped around his head. He looks like that gum Taliban. And it's like, now what do we do? <laughs> well, we got to take him somewhere because he's wounded. It's and how do, how like Misty. Like how do you Misty was here may say man down. That right. was man down. <laughs> and y'all, it was horrible. It's like, look, and here's the bad thing. While we was while we were down there, I had everything I've ever owned pretty much been four-wheel drive. And it was rough to get under that bridge. Well, it come a big rain while we were under there. Oh, that's and I, had, and I had tore my front drive shaft out. And so I was out going to have to wait the next day to get out. Well, the only vehicle that would come out from under there was one of one of my buddies had a a, a CJ7 Jeep. It's like an 80 something, like 1980 CJ7 Jeep. But the bad thing, this is like one o'clock in the morning, and the fuse was blowed on his headlights. He didn't have any lights. <laughs> and that when I mean, we got like seven cars down there, but nobody can get out except him. Mm. Well, only only lights he had, he had four big KC lights on the roll bar. So we shoved this old boy in this Jeep. And we take off about four and a half, five miles to town, middle of the night, with him shoving back his Jeep. Have to drive up to his mom and daddy's. <laughs> you know, it's like, how are we going to explain this? Yeah. How you it's not good. Mom and pops ain't going to be so proud. <laughs> well, <laughs> go up there and like another, we volunteered these other two boys, the ones that wasn't soaked in blood, to go up there and bump on the door at one o'clock in the morning. His mom and mama comes to the door and they're like, Hey, uh, you, uh, you boys are kind of hurt. He, he may need to go to the doctor. <laughs> kind of hurt. They, they come out there and look at him and like freak out. Then they take off, you know, like throwing gravel to go into the hospital. 
And oh. dude, I cannot remember. It was way, mm. way north of a hundred. It seemed like a hundred and forty something stitches they put in his forehead to put his scalp back <laughs> together. Uh, it, it, they were laughing about it. I said something to his daddy about I ain't been a couple of weeks ago. We was talking about it. And that's what his daddy was laughing and said, yes, and they knew at the hospital he'd been drinking. So they didn't give him anything to numb it. Oh, Lord. He took, they put all them stitches in there, just raw dogged them. Oh, man. And, you know, um, as soon as you started telling the story, I, I was thinking about the tension that was being built up, you know. And and when you're young, that you find out the hard way. Oh, yeah. I, my, the crew I grew up, grew up around, practical jokes and joking and we had our store uh i remember um uh, this is totally off subject but i don't know what makes me you know when you tell a story you think of something but i had a, a baptist uh church bus pulled up and it was from alabama somewhere and i guess they were heading to nashville but it, i saw the on the side there and it was full of women and had one male driver little bitty guy and the store the door was shut and I could hear them yelling at him. So I knew yeah. that they thought he was lost. And all of them were about the same size, had the Sunday best on, all their colors and everything. And they were just giving them down the road. And he had this look on his face like, man, somebody kill me now, you know. And he was trying to explain to them. So I thought this, I don't know where stuff comes from. It seemed like a good idea at the time. They all came in and got in a half circle around him. <laughs> and I'm I'm right at six foot tall. They were all like five two or all about the same size. He was probably about five six. And they're all looking up at me like this behind him, mad, just mad. Every one of them mad. And he looked at me like, sir, can you please tell these ladies where we're at? I said, <laughs> why y'all like Texas so far? <laughs> 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 oh, the look on his face is like no. <laughs> you ever seen? You ever looked inside a watch? You seen this cog go this way and this cog go yeah. that way? They all started dancing in unison in different directions, and it was like oh. the craziest thing I ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> they was a praying and screaming. It was, and I, I didn't think I was ever gonna, ever gonna get them people to believe that they were, you know, um, in Tennessee. Yeah. My my daddy, he told me a bunch of times, he said, you got to quit doing stuff like that because somebody one of these days is going to, you know, they're going to get ticked. But, yeah, and some of these stories I can't tell. I can't tell on here. No, I, my, I was telling my boy about, I was telling him just there two ago, we have some fire, it's a bag of fireworks over here at the man cave. I said, look, get them things out from over here, go shoot them, do something, just don't get in trouble. Which, you know, fireworks are legal here, but, you know, it depends on how you utilize them. I told him, I said, don't do. I said, I'm going to tell you, I said, uh, when, uh, back when I was four men, me and Wanda got married. So we talking about this is probably 92, three, four, something like that. Um, Chief Police up here. Now he was, he was stickler. Now he always, he loved catching kids doing something he wasn't supposed to. Well, my cousin, he had a gun store. And he got to get these things, and they're they're called bird bird bombs, and they're made to use on these orchards and stuff to keep varmints away from your farm fields. And they make a little gun. It's a launcher that you put a like a, a shotgun primer in it. You back the hammer and slide this thing. Things about big as my finger. They're red. Did it launch it. It'll shoot it up, and then it'll explode. <laughs> well, them things are no joke. They're about the equivalent of one eighth of a stick of dynamite Ugh. now i'm talking about they're they're really not made to play with but you know that meant we needed to play with them right and we got to figure i figured a way that you could take these things and you could put a fuse in them and and touch them off and cannon fuse for people that don't know it's it's two seconds per inch is what wax cannon fuse burns at so you can determine how long it, that the fuses burn before they go off well, we'd got to touching them off in the middle of town at night, which our town's not very big. We got one massive red light, but we'd touch them off and people got to call in city hall and complaining because I mean, it'd rattle, it'd rattle windows in a house, one of them would for 300 yards. Well, chief police put out the word amongst the young folks that he didn't know who was setting off these 
these fireworks, which he didn't know what it was, that by God, somebody's fixing me in trouble. Well, I took that kind of like as a personal challenge. Well, I'll show you. Well, he was, he'd pull up like if we were hanging out in front of the grocery store and parking lot sitting around, he'd pull in there and sometimes talk to us and he may stay a minute and he may stay an hour. And then he'd pull off over somewhere and then he'd love to sneak back up, hide behind the laundromat and listen to us or watch us. Well, he never could catch me touching off them fireworks. Well, then I got word that he'd about narrowed it down. It had to be me, but he couldn't, he just couldn't catch me. And he was, he put out the word, pretty much sent it to me that, that he was going to catch me and I was going to be in bad trouble. So I devised a plan. The Lord blessed me with a quick wit and sharp mind. <laughs> I decided one day, cause I had this big spool. I mean, I was buying cannon fuse, 250 foot rolls. <clears throat> so I could, I could calculate how long it would take for it to go off. Well, me and another old boy, I had him. I had a Ford Mustang GT at that time. So I all hopped up. You know, it couldn't be nothing stock. It had glass packs and headers and all that on it. Well, I devised six of these fireworks. And some of them I had like pretty long fuses and some of them not so long fuses. So different times. Well, me and this buddy of mine, we rode around and you could take a cigarette. Back then, cigarettes wouldn't go out. You'd light one get started. It just burned down to nothing. Well, my plan was we'd go somewhere and light a cigarette and I'd break a filter off and stick it on that fuse and we'd plant it, just lay it on the side of the road. We scattered like six of these things all around through town, different locations. Chief police was parked in the middle of town at that uh, grocery store parking lot. I had enough time that we pulled back up and I pulled driver's door to driver's door and shut my Mustang off, rolled the window down, was sitting there talking to him. We'd been there about three or four minutes. Boom! He jumps up and he's looking around. He said, he like looks back at me and he looks around. He said, where'd that come from? I said, it come from that way. <laughs> we was there about another two minutes. <laughs> Boom! One come from the other way. He said, did you see a car? I didn't even see a car come through. I said, I didn't either. There ain't been nobody there. <laughs> two or three minutes. Boom! These, all six of them went off, and I was sitting right there with him when they went off. He Perfect. never knew what happened, and I read, as far as I know, he never suspected me of being the guy that done it ever again. Well, you remind you reminded me, uh, that happened in our uh, uh, metal shop. I was a freshman, and these senior guys were smoking, and where there was um, um, lockers in there. And I walked up on a guy, and he was doing that same thing, but with a – with a regular firecracker, nothing that big. Yeah. And so long story on short on that one, that story, um, it happened as perfect as it could because the lesson for the day was how to uh, use the settling torch. And the, our teacher was over there strike, talking about be careful. <laughs> and he was striking it. We forgot all about it over there. And he was striking that thing and it went off. And that, that poor man, it's a wonder he didn't die right there. But the craziest thing that happened in that metal shop, they would take, I was a freshman, I was from Lewisburg, or I lived in Lewisburg. Chapel Hill and Cornersville schools would bust guys into vocational school. And when you got us all together, it was bad. So yeah. one of our old teachers, uh, Don's in here. Uh, he, uh, I ain't going to say any names. So I don't want anybody to know this happened. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> we, there was, he had this, um, like a 73, two-tone Chevrolet, like a copper and white, 353 speed on the column. Just, and he wanted a uh, uh, ball hit put in the in the bed. And so the teacher said, look, I know you guys can do it. I got to go do some stuff in there. He was grinding on something. He was shaping something. He said, I want y'all to take this bed off. It's enough of you here to do it. Then I want you to, you know, y'all you know, know what to do. So, all right. So I was learning. And uh, like I said, I was an idea guy. And I was just joking. This plant in town had uh, replaced their conveyor system. And there was long sections of track that had those uh, rollers and the steel rod that went through the middle of them and all that, the bearings and all that stuff. Yeah. And there were some small sections. And so Pops, he was in there. He was grinding on, on whatever he was grinding on. And I was like, guys, 
I said, oh, I, said, I shouldn't have said this. I thought, I wonder how fast we can get this thing, put these tires up on those rollers right there. I wonder how fast we could get it, joking. And they're like, yeah, 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 let's do it. So the next thing I know, these old boys went over and got two of those tracks, picked the back of that truck up and set those tires on top of those rollers. And the guy from uh, Chapel Hill, he said, who's going to drive it? He said, hell, I'll drive it. He got in there, fired that thing up. It sounded good. <laughs> He went through first gear, second gear, kicked the four ball in with the third when he went to third gear. And I'm looking and I'm thinking, man, is these if these bearings seize up, it's gonna throw, it's gonna do two one of two things. It's gonna throw these tracks through their legs, or it's gonna come off the tracks and it's gonna jump that loading dock over there and run upside the school. <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm like, oh my God, I gotta get out of here. So I went in there, me being the freshman. And I'm like, I'm, I'm shaking because they're going to get killed. You know, there's no good going to come out of this. And it's wide open. I mean, you can hear it. Well, Pops couldn't hear it because he was grinding on that metal. And so I was over. I got the broom and I was sweeping up some of his mess he was making. And I accidentally bumped into him where he'd see me sweeping. <laughs> this principal come running around the corner screaming, screaming like, you are not going to believe what those idiots are doing out there. What? What? He said, he went, everybody in here now and get, get to my office. And Pops said, everybody but this guy right here, he's been helping me the whole time. <laughs> it was my idea. Uh, <laughs> it was going to kill me. But you, God, with country, you have to be care, so careful. You know, we didn't, we didn't have malls and skateboards and stuff. <laughs> I've never seen a skateboard you can ride through a cow pasture. <laughs> no, no, it's no good to us, right? Um, we, yeah, we've done so much. Um, uh, I, I want to, um, would y'all want to get on one night and, uh, and, and do some talking with like a round table type? I know Spencer's wanting to do that. Well, yeah, I'm game. We'll do yeah, something. And I, we'll come up with something to entertain folks. You talking about yeah. private or you talking about on, on the air? Hey, you got some of your kin folk. You, you have a daughter, you say? Yeah, that's my baby girl. She's yeah, okay. Hey, how you doing? Yep, that's Abby. She uh, they coming back. That's what I sent her a message. They they've left her, her <laughs> ball game. I don't know if she won, lost, or draw. <laughs> well, Don Don, he's former game warden. I I'm not I'm not gonna mention any names. These guys have passed away. But uh, you talking about the, you know, we used to get the um, the three quarter stick of dynamite or the quarter stick of dynamite out of Alabama. The uh, what they used to call those the um, the little red ones. Um, I can't cherry bombs or something. Yeah, cherry bombs. Yeah, and they they would get them out of there, out of y'all's place somewhere. Well, like I said, dude, them the old cherry bombs, them things that I had, they was they would give a cherry bomb a run for its money if they weren't stronger. I mean, yeah. oh my God. And we, I know uh, so two old, two old guys. They they fished all the time, and they come in and they was all scuffed up and dirty looking, you know. And I was like, "Hey, John." What y'all, you know, what y'all been doing? And he's like, he pointed at his buddy. He said, "Tell him what you did." I gotta go to the bathroom. So they had been down to Duck River, and he had a stick of dynamite, a few, a couple sticks. This, and he said they had got down there, and they were looking, and they're like, you know what? If we if we throw this in this river right here, we can it's stuff will float down here, and we can pick up. You know, yeah, let's do that. And they were down there drinking. And I don't know if it was old dynamite. I don't know. They found it somewhere. That's back before they kept up with it. Like to keep up with it now. I think they found it in one of them shed or something. Anyway, it was a long time ago. I can't remember. But uh, he said, uh, he said, hell, I was sitting there watching him. And I didn't want no part of it. And there was, they were standing on this rock, these huge rocks right there at the river. And there was a split. Right down the middle of it, it was two separate rocks, and there was a tree growing up out of it. And uh, he said, I was watching him, and he lit that crap up, and he hurled it out there as far as he could. And I'm sitting there, and I said, how long do you think it'd take for it to go off? He said, I don't know, a few seconds. He said, hell, I got to looking, and I got to looking at the current, and the current was running under and down rocks that we were standing on. God. I'm talking about half as big as my house, you know, big, yeah. huge rocks. <clears throat> boulders he said all of a sudden I said, Larry get the hell out of here run <laughs> and he, he, 
He said, I turned and run and got about four steps. And it's like the world comes in. He said, oh, wait. He said, I fell on my back and I looked up and that tree comes shooting out of that crack and went straight up in there. He said, Larry done piled up over here. He can't get up. And I, I'm looking up at that tree. He said, heads up, Larry. Heads up. <laughs> he said, it landed right between them. I mean, Greg, what would have happened to us if we'd had Tanner Wright when we was 15? Dude. I, dude, I, I'm tell, I don't know. I'm glad the stuff's legal. I'm glad it is legal, but I don't know how it's still legal. I do I not no know. Idea. I told Peyton the other day, <clears throat> we went in Dunham's in Columbia, and they had a whole display on sale. They, you know, and I'm yeah. like, Peyton, I said, that right there, if, if it was around when the group of guys I ran around with, yep. it We'd, we'd have been dead or in prison. It's absolutely wild what that stuff will do. God. Yeah. Do. And it ain't nothing but ammonium nitrate and aluminum dust. That's all it is. Well, what's it? Why Why do they have it? Why do they have it for sale? I mean, it's just an exploding reactive target. Not, and I, I could see some of the old farmers trying to blow up a stump or something, you know. Uh, but, yeah, there wouldn't have been a fish left in these ponds around here. No. We well, would, you know the thing about the thing about that stuff. If you want to neutralize it, get it wet. Okay, water, really? water will kill it. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, yeah water will kill it. See, I don't. I don't even want to look at it when I walk by because I don't want to end up on a list. I'm probably on a few anyway. Thing about it though, I mean, dude, it'll. Uh, if it don't have that aluminum powder mixed in it, it's it's inert. <laughs> it won't do nothing. But now, you know, that's just like. You know, like blasting agent. I mean, basically, that's ammonium nitrate and diesel fuel. That's about all that is. And it's, you better, buy, that's not the place to be. I don't care nothing about messing with none of that stuff. That stuff, I'd rather not go on the glory blowing a bunch of, you know, the Lord needed dust pan to scoop me up. Uh, <laughs> no. And, and we would be in the ones when you, Peyton, he showed me the YouTube videos, like uh, the refrigerator door almost killing that guy. Oh, yeah. From I don't know how far away, that would have been one of us. Well, did you ever see the one where the guy had that stuff packed on that lawnmower and he shot the lawnmower and the lawnmower come apart and it cut his leg off? Oh, no. yes, sir. No. Look, up, look, look that up on YouTube and it's, uh, you know, lawnmower. I was trying to think. Tannerite, Tannerite and lawnmower cuts leg, cuts guy's leg off. But this guy, what it was, the idiot, he was like a hundred yards from it, but he couldn't hit the the tan right on the lawnmower and he kept getting closer and closer and he gets up like 35, 40 yards and the camera, I reckon the guy's holding the camera and the other guy's shooting. seems like, I don't think the camera was on it. Anyway, I hadn't seen it in a couple of years, but anyway, this guy's filming and all of a sudden you see this piece of shrapnel coming, like coming fast. And all of a sudden the camera like just falls over to the ground. Well, because the guy holding the camera right like above his knee, he's a big chunk of something metal. Oh. Just, just zoop. Can you imagine one of the blades coming across there? Yeah, I mean, even I mean, the it, back. It yeah. just cut this guy, cut this guy's leg, just slicked it off. I don't, I don't know if I can watch that or not. Peyton, he come up to me one day. He said, "Hey, watch this, watch this video." I said, "What is it?" Just watch it. I said, yeah, "It was a bunch of wild hogs standing in." You know, oh yeah. <laughs> I might. I don't know if I need to finish it or not. They they had baited them, I guess, and they were standing around. He said, "Just keep a, keep an eye on them." Yeah. And somebody fired into that tannerite, and it was barbecue. Oh yeah, it, it'll just level. I mean, it'll just blow them off. Pace. There'll be hogs like 50, 60, 80 feet in the air, just whipping, going up, leaving. Oh, uh, that's cool. It, I, well, I mean, <laughs> where they're doing it, I mean, it's a nuisance animal or the story. Right. Crops. I mean, I ain't see anything get killed like that. I, I really wish that they would use the the meat for something. Whether they donate it to prisons to feed right. inmates, something, it's feed not, something. I mean, that you're, yeah, that's yeah. Well, I mean, it's the same way with you know with rats and stuff. We've we've done stuff, you know, to get rid of those before, and and I guess it's the same thing. They're they're the hurting environment, the hurting animals, you know, their food. And it's, I, I but like you said, it's a w awful waste because they're really good to eat. 
Yeah, that ain't that good. all. Them hogs, man. If you can get if you can get on some hogs, I I don't never hog hunt, but I got some buddies that do, and I've had them several times. Call me, they'd have a they'd have a pig that would be 60, 80 pounds on the hoof. Man, you want this hog? I'm like, yeah, sure do. And man, <laughs> yeah, I've never had a problem. You know, I I take I just skin them out, skin the whole hog just like a deer, and you know, of course, cut its head off, skin it out like a deer clean it up real good and i'd always soak them in salt water like overnight ice salt water drain it next day put more ice more in clean water and then like two days later i'd put them on these big smokers and i got two smokers it's on trailers yeah i got a 125 gallon one and i got a 250 gallon one oh. dude you take uh take pecan wood or take apple wood hickory's good but i'd rather have the pecan mm -hmm. or apple the, the milder and dude, smoke that whole pig. Golly, you talking about good? That's it, what I learned. I learned on that type of smoker when I was young. Uh, I always wanted to learn how. My uncle, he had one like that on the trailer. Yeah. And he said, "Well, you got to come over like two days before, which, you know, and I'll show you the whole process." And he didn't have any temperature gauges. He didn't have anything. He would he would put his hand on there if he could leave it on there for three seconds. It needed more heat. And if you could only leave it on there a second or less, he needed to dampen it down so yeah, yeah he would put you know split a hog and put it on there and then cook chicken around it and we had um i remember one of my favorite parts just before daylight when we would do that he would get a, one of those iron skillets one of the biggest ones you can get and he'd set yeah. it over on the firebox and uh, he he always had uh smoked sausage from the mennonites over in uh uh you've been over there uh on the side of Pulaski. Lawrenceburg? Yeah, over in there, yeah. And uh, he would go get get some of that, and we would, man, you talking about good. But I'm like you. I I like the hickory, but I, I, I kind of like the cherry. I've got a big pile of cherry out here I bought uh, from a guy, and uh, I, I think that's one of my favorites. I've never used pecan, but I hear it's pretty good. Yeah, what you say? My wife commented on there. Don't forget the white sauce. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to hold Spencer down, pour some white sauce in him. I, I like it. Well, I, I, I'm not, I'm not just blowing my own horn because, dude, I, I've done a lot of, lot of smoking meat, a lot of barbecuing, doing it for big occasions. I have people, I have people want me to, to smoke meat for weddings, uh, church functions, fire department functions, stuff like that. I mean, I, I'm their most of them go to on smoking meat. Uh, but my white sauce dude is mine's mine's not like most people's mine. I use just distilled, distilled white vinegar. I don't use malt vinegar. I hate malt vinegar. I use distilled white vinegar. Of course it's heavy on mine. You got mayonnaise, uh, and certain kind of mayonnaise. Uh, I don't, the, my favorite mayonnaise to make white sauce is that Sawyer's Sawyer's mayonnaise. I don't think I've seen that. Yeah, it's Sawyer's. It's really good. It's got a good flavor. Uh, but I use distilled white vinegar, and I do not. Everybody wants to put sugar in it. My gosh, that burns white sauce. No, no sugar. But I've got about there's about seven or eight different spices that I put, and you've got to have. I'm talking about enough black pepper to choke somebody down. You got to have a lot of black pepper and a lot of minced onion, onion powder, garlic powder, Creole seasoning. Uh, you put a little bit of Worcestershire in it. Uh, just, but now my white sauce, I have people all the time wanting, man, can you, I have people call me sometimes like around the holidays. Like, look, uh, <laughs> we got our meat. We're, we're smoking our chickens, but would you make us some white sauce? I'm like, yeah. So I'll make white sauce for them. Wow. I, I like to try that. And I, I like it. And like you said, chicken, uh, now the other day, uh, we they had pulled pork, and had the white sauce, and I, I knew it wasn't going to be you know that great. And uh, I saw it. I poured a little bit on there, took a bite of it, and I remember I worked in Decatur for a little while, and yeah. first time I ever heard of Bob Gibson, we went, uh, we went to eat over there. Um, it was all right. It, I can, it, it I like, can eat. You know, I can eat their white sauce, but I don't yeah. like it. I mean, it's all right, but I'd rather than. Uh, I, did, I did learn something in Georgia a couple years ago. Me and my wife went to Florida, 
and we always like to go different ways to see different parts you know of alabama or whatever and uh, uh matter of fact we got rear-ended down there <laughs> oh to y'all somewhere uh right on the way down but uh we pulled up we're, we went through georgia we pulled up at this exit it said best barbecue in georgia i'm like oh well you know what we're gonna we're gonna see and um pulled in there got we get, got out of the truck i'm looking around packed full of people she said what's wrong i said front ain't right she said, what do you mean i said i don't know i can't put my finger on it we got out and went i, said, I know what it is i don't smell no damn smoke i don't even smell residue of where they've been smoking i don't yeah. smell nothing i said uh i ain't never been to a barbecue joint that cooks it on premises that didn't have some kind of smell yeah and uh we went in there and it, it not only was the barbecue the worst we ever had the the potato salad everything we got the only thing we got good was tea wow and it was <clears throat> it was supposed to be people you know i've asked people about it and i can't remember what it was but the best barbecue i ever had was uh sugar fire 33 up in uh, st louis really and i like all types of barbecue but this place was like something off the food network and man that's when i got out i didn't know it was there i got out going to the hotel and i mean i pointed like a <laughs> you know i looked yeah. right at it and i said i know where we're having supper at and it was uh it was pretty amazing some of their sauces and potato they did a little different potato salad like a it was a like a mayonnaise base with new potatoes and it was different you know like a, i don't know if it had buttermilk i don't know what it had in it but it was just different man uh, I don't I don't know what my mother-in-law, Wanda's mom, does. She makes some potato salad that would run a car if it wouldn't stop up the filter. My <laughs> God, that stuff. That is the best potato salad. Do you, like a, do you like a mayonnaise and mustard mix in your I potato do. salad? Yep. Yeah. My, yeah, I thought Peyton was going to get me killed when he was about 14. He <laughs> went in this place down in the south somewhere, and uh, he, he wanted pulled pork and uh, – potato salad my mama you know you grew up on your mama stuff and everybody you know like you when people call you and say hey will you make me they people want her to make her potato salad and uh, yeah. it had mustard mayonnaise well uh we we got the potato salad peyton looks at it he he said he looked at me and we had bikers all around us and we had people you know we we're in a pretty rough joint you know and i don't you know it, he took a bite of that shit and he said <coughs> what 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 kind of people don't put mustard in their tater salad? <laughs> Jeez, this is awful. And I was like, shut up. You mean we're not in Lewisburg, you know? Yeah. Get, get me, you know, I'm the one going to get stomped. But people looked around like, how dare you? Because, you know, you got local stuff that people love. Yeah. You're going to defend it. If you don't like it, you better keep your mouth shut. Well, I'm going to tell you something that, that man, you know, man, and my buddy Allen, we come up with, it was one of those deals of, was about to starve, was over at the man cave. And my baby girl absolutely loves like manwich, like sloppy Joe sandwiches. Mm -hmm. Loves them. I mean, that if you asked her every night for a week what she could want to eat, probably five out of seven would be sloppy Joe's. Well, we had we'd made up, and I, I can't make nothing like just normal servings. I always make like enough to eat like three meals. Yeah. And we had made a bunch of sloppy Joe, and I, I we really don't buy beef. We I mean, I have enough ground deer meat every year. That's what we eat. If I feed my kids regular beef, they look at me like, Daddy, what's wrong with my burger? Or what's wrong with my sloppy joe? And yeah. why are you feeding me this cow? Because, you know, you just don't love us anymore. Yeah, what? what happened? Yeah. yeah. What do we do? <laughs> but anyway, oh, uh, and I always add some extra Creole and lots of black pepper and stuff. I put a little extra seasoning. But look, dude, make some sloppy joes. And Al, the the restaurant or restaurant, the grocery store up here in town, they make real good homemade slaw, and it's mayonnaise slaw, and it is cabbage slaw, and that stuff is, oh my gosh, it's good. I it, it's nearly like eating a bowl of damn ice cream. I mean, it's unreal. <laughs> but here's the deal: we went in here, it, we'd made sloppy joes like on a Saturday night, and we was in here piddling around that Sunday. I said, he said, I'm about to starve. I said, I'm basically going there and get some of that sloppy Joe mix, warm it up, and eat a sloppy Joe. 
and he had this container of that slaw he'd picked up. Well, I put some sloppy Joe on the on a bun. I just grabbed that slaw and put a layer of I mean the sloppy Joe was an inch thick, and I put about a half inch layer of of slaw on that sloppy mm. Joe and put it together. I've been into that and it was like life altering. I was like, oh my gosh. Why didn't I think of this earlier? He's <laughs> like, is that good? I said, no. he's he loves slaw. I said, fix you one. He bit into that and just like his eyes got big. He's like, golly. So, dude, look, I will not eat Sloppy Joe without slaw. Ever slaw right now? I'm going to have to try that. I, have, you ever, have you ever heard of um, Pool Room Slaw up here in uh, Lincoln County? I don't Maybe think so. Be? So it's not a mayonnaise. It's a mustard. and It may be mustard and mayonnaise. Or vinegar. There's, a couple pool, there's a pool room, what well, used to be, uh, on the square in Fayetteville. And, heck, I think that I don't think they have a festival, but they have a couple places, maybe three places that do it. And you can get their little hamburgers. It's a, it's a pool room slaw hamburger. And they will take and slap that on there. And, and it's unique enough that it's really good. It's got a little sweetness to it, a little yeah. sweet and, and that mustard too. Uh, but I, I definitely won't try that because I'm, I'm like you. I will, uh, I will combine things in a hurry. Now, they might not go together, and I won't do it again. But sometimes <laughs> you just got to try it, man. You just got to live right. fingers. They are. Right. Uh, but I, what I was gonna tell you too, like that, like white sauce. I mean, I like white sauce on white barbecue sauce on pork. I, I love it on pork. But where it really shines is on poultry, chicken, turkey, stuff like that. Oh, it's so good. Oh, wild turkey dipping in there. Fried yeah. wild turkey. Yes, oh, sir. Hey, take like fried chicken fingers and dip it in it. Yeah. It's to me, it's yeah. way better than ranch. Way, way better. Oh. Um, yeah. But yeah, that uh dude, or, or take like if you go out in the during rabbit season in the spring, catch some of these young rabbits, kill you six, eight, ten young rabbits, skin them out, and then half them, split them, you know, split them things, throw them on a smoker and smoke them. And about 15 minutes before they're, they're totally done, take I'll mix up white sauce, and you dunk those halves in it and lay them back on there, let it stay on there for just a few minutes, and then take them off and dunk them again. Yeah. And let that caramelize. Dude, it is unreal how good that is. Man, that sounds yeah. Uh, uh, until about ten. <laughs> um, I've been See, reading some of these. Let me, reading. let me tell you what sister sister Haynes done there. Tell me a while ago. She uh -oh. sent me, sent me and uh, Spencer our our group messages us three. She sends me a picture of a plate of food that under I know she had to fix it. She had a like a, a big plate. And had like green beans and mac and cheese and big old piece of some type of toasted bread, but she had a dad gum hamburger steak. That thing was like bigger than my head. And then she comments that she had to like break it apart so she could get it on the plate. So I'm like, I'm thinking I ain't eat nothing all day, and she's like, I told her I can show off. How do you get it done all the way? You like a medium hamburgers, Misty? That's hard to do. Yeah. I, nowadays, nowadays, I don't, you know, like you said, buying stuff at a grocery store, I don't know what you're buying. Sometimes you'll you'll make a patty that big or whatever, and it'll end up like a piece of sausage, you know. I don't that, know. Either. I'm telling you, it looked like if she had a nine inch skillet, <laughs> it looked like one patty would have filled the whole skillet up. <laughs> like a big as a big as a meatloaf without all the uh, seasoning. Yeah, Greg, Greg, I want to tell you uh, what I did by accident one time. You talking about your deer and stuff, and I try to tell people that they'll eat my deer meat. Now, what'd you soak this in? And I'm like ice water. And well, this is the best ever. Well, I tell you what I do. That they, they won't tell you what the you know. Yeah. And, I'm, and so what happened? A, a guy he he didn't have a whole lot of money, and a, a man got a deer for him. He cut it up for him, put it in a cooler full of ice. He said, hey, when you see him, when you see Leonard, you give it to him. Like, yeah, I'll do that for you. Well, I didn't see Leonard for three or four days. And that, that, that ice was melting and that blood would settle to the bottom. I'd yep. drain it off, refill it, put a little water in it, you know. Yep. This went on for three or four days, and the the week, the meat got was white, you know, yep. on the outside. And um, I noticed about the fourth day, 
I looked off in there, going to drain the blood, and it wasn't in. Yep. And uh, I got to looking at it, and I found Leonard. I said, Leonard, I've had this stuff for about four days. I done bought about <laughs> 10 bags of ice. And uh, I said, but here, Max told me to give it to you. He said, well, I'm going to give you at least one of the back strip, you know, back straps, whatever you call yeah. them. And I'm, no, I ain't going to do that. And, yeah, you take it on. All right. I went in there, got home, and sliced it, and it was deep red, you know, cut it, and I noticed there wasn't any blood coming out of it. Yep. And I just took and uh, coated it with some flour. I, I don't remember if I did a wet mix or whatever, but anyway, I just fried some up right there. The best I ever, it was absolutely unbelievable. And I got to thinking about it. I'm like, you know what? It didn't have a, I guess that cold water put, compressed it and it pushed that stuff out. I started doing everything like that. Squirrels, rabbits, fish, you know, which they don't have to stay as long. Yeah. But uh, my my ex-mother-in-law, she was my mother-in-law at the time, she hated hunters. <laughs> and uh, I don't know how anybody could eat that mess. And I'm like, well, yeah. uh, I'll cook you some and you won't be able to tell me what it is. Yeah. I took it out of the freezer, uh, thawed it out. I don't remember if I run hot water over it or whatever. Carried it out to the grill, put salt and pepper on it. She watched me. Took a bite with no snarled up and she said, oh my God, this is deer meat. I'm like, this ma'am. And we would make our burger, our deer burger. We get hog fat. My my uncle would kill hogs. Yeah. And I'd save some of the fat. You talking about good. Yeah, yeah. That I'll tell you. I'll tell you a trick on that about hog fat. If you if you're gonna if you're gonna do that, don't plan on keeping your meat over about one year. If you use pork fat, but now you can use, uh, especially if you're gonna uh, vacuum seal the meat. But if you're gonna make like deer sausage or, or burgers and you want to add some some fat in it, get go to a butcher shop and get some uh, get you some beef fat, beef tallow. And, and mix your beef with it and you mix it whatever ratio you want. But I right. mean, we'd usually do like, like do like 10 or 12%. You know, if you had 10, say 10 pounds of meat, we'd put like say a pound and a half right? and a pound and a half of fat with it and then grind it and we'd grind it twice. We'd mix it and grind it and then we'd regrind it. But that beef fat won't go rancid like pork will after it's been froze for a while. Yeah. And dude, I, I'm telling you, I, you you can have uh, deer meat that's this vacuum seal. It can be two years old, and you can't tell it from some you just ground that day. That I've, I've got some from last year. That's just we that I need to eat, and it's vacuum seal. But it's just it's not ground up. It's just cut up into steaks or whatever. You know, yeah. I'm gonna, I, I'll get, I need to get some of that out. Peyton he eats the heck out of it. I know one time we got in a bind. You know, back in the day. A lot of times the food was fresh. That's all I'll say. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we we went through a couple of days there and we were going to have a cookout. And I was like, hey, let's make some deer burger. We couldn't find any fat anywhere. And somebody had the idea. They went and bought a big old box of that uh, 10 pounds of uh, bacon. Yeah. And, of course, we we're going to eat it right away, right? And uh, yeah. so, yeah, we that was pretty good. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad. <clears throat> but I'd rather have it's something that you need to learn to do if you haven't ever done it is uh canning it in like glass like ball jars can you dear mate yeah i've seen it but i don't man it is so easy so easy to do so what what do you what do you put in in the the liquid what's the liquid in the jar or what, is it? well i mean what you want to do you want to try to trim as much fat off of the deer meat as you can you, it don't have to be just squeaky clean no fat but you don't want big chunks of fat which there's not a lot of big chunks of fat on there most of the time anyway but you want to cut that meat up and like like uh so like stew meat you know you can have a piece big as my pinky finger or, or like little cubes just cut it up and get your jars ready where your jars are clean and sterile and you take the raw the raw deer meat dry and you start packing those jars and you pack it all you can put in it and you leave it down about an inch and a half about where the jar starts rounding into the top. Mm -hmm. And then you put like on a pint jar, you put a, a, a fourth of a teaspoon of canning salt, which is non iodine, no iodine in it. You put canning salt, which I use the Tony Satry's Creole seasoning. 
and I'll put like on like on a pint, I'll put a teaspoon of that. And if I do a quart, you don't want to go over a quart because the jar is so big, the meat is so far through it. But you can do a quart, and I'll put two teaspoons of Tony's. And then what you do is you can either take some, some water and dilute or uh, dissolve some bouillon cubes, like beef bouillon, or just buy beef broth in the can. And what you do is you just pour that broth to cover it up. But you don't want to go like to the the neck of the jar, like where the threads are, right. you want to stay down about say an inch from the top. And once you pour that broth in there, you take a plastic knife and like go down and kind of wiggle down in the meat and make sure the air bubbles come up. And now all you want to do is make sure the meat's covered. Then wipe the, the rim of the jars clean and then have your, the flats, have them in hot water. Just put them on there and, and snug them. You put them in your canner, your pressure canner, and you want water up nearly to the to the metal ring. Just it's a big water bath, and put your your canner lid on, and it's uh I think it's fifteen pounds of pressure. I'd have to look. I got the weights in there. It's either it's either ten or fifteen psi, and you do ninety minutes, ninety minutes. Like you turn that canner on, like the canner I've got, I can do eighteen. I can do eighteen quarts at a time. I can do 18 quarts or I think it's 20, maybe 26 pints, but I do them in two layers. The The bottom layer has the water up nearly to the top and then you got a spacer and then the other jars are just sitting in top. And once I turn like my gas stove turned on high and I got the lid and I let it start blowing steam and then I put the weight on it and then I watch the gauge and when that gauge goes up and it starts, you know, going you just turn it down to where all you want it to do. It don't need to sit there and just blow steam. You want it just every eight, 10 seconds go and then stop and you're holding your pressure. But when you get that pressure and it's holding, you look at the clock and go up 90 minutes, hour and a half. All right. If it's quart jars, cause it's, it's further through the meat, you go two hours. So pints, half pints and pints is 90 minutes and two hours on courts. But dude, when it gets when like I'll come in here and watch a movie, I'll just I can sit in here, I can hear it in there, and it, I know it's doing its thing. Because if it's sitting there just going, ch -ch 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 -ch, you'll boil your water out. Yeah. But anyway, I'll watch a movie and I'll look and I go, well, it's been an hour and a half. I'll just walk in there to the stove and just turn it off. Don't mess with bleeding it off. Don't try to open it. Just let it just walk off. Give it thirty minutes. I'll go back in there. And most time by then, the pressure's done let nearly down to, to gone or whatever, where you can remove the weight and then your counter's safe to open. Well, then I just put like like a big beach towel on the on the countertop. And when I open that counter up, just be careful opening it. You take those jars out and you can set them on the counter. Now, look, setting on the counter, I don't know how many degrees that hits in all that steam. But those jars inside the jar with it sitting on the kitchen counter on a towel, you can sit and watch the liquid just rolling, boiling inside that jar. It'll mm. be, it'll boil for another 15 minutes after you take it out of the counter with it sitting on the table. Mm. And then after they start cooling down, you'll start hearing the, the flat, the lid, it'll go click, 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 click. And you just make sure that all of them suck down. That stuff will keep for a long, it'll keep for years. And the thing, the cool thing, yeah, I can go in there right now and take a jar of that, take the ring off, and it'll thump when it opens. You can take a plastic fork and reach in there and eat it straight out of the jar. Uh, slow boil. Yeah, oh, it, it's it's like you've cooked a beef roast in like a slow pressure or like a, a crock pot all night and half the day. It, you can just cut it with a fork. Tender. Uh, have but, you? Have you ever had any experience making country hounds? I have. Not a lot. <clears throat> That's not. My, uh, I've got a building out here. My uncle does it. He's been doing it for years. And it, it as long as you got the place to do it, it's, it's not that hard. But uh, I think he leaves it uh, one day per pound. If it's a 15-pound hound, seven, what he'll do like 17 days. And he, I've seen them take and layer that salt and put rocks in between the hounds where they don't touch each other. Yeah. And then hang it up, and he'll sprinkle black pepper and red pepper on them to keep, help keep the flies off. Keep flies off, yeah. Ain't nothing. There's no comparison to a 
a ham like that and what you get in the store. No, you you can't buy a ham like that in the store. You can't do no. it. You can't do it. That no, uh, no. there's I, a I had uh, my other uncle, his brother. He I, he gave me one one time, and I said, "Well, I don't know what I want to do with it." I said, it's about a two and a half year old ham. It's about right. And my, my his brother, he said, well, here's what you do. He said, you cut it up. However, you're going to cut it up. He said, you get one of those big pickle jars and you start packing it down in there. And then you take some oil of some kind, keep the air off of it. Yep. Where it's canola or whatever kind of oil you want to use cooking oil. And he said, I pour it over there and I get it just over the, over the meat. He said, put it in the refrigerator. He said, when you get ready for a few slices, you take and dip it out, throw it in a skillet or, or, or in the beans or whatever, and you got the oil flavored and whatever. Man, are you talking about? <laughs> Man, I, I've, I've got two. I need to cut up one and do it like that. But uh, he and he did he did that. You know, my my grandparents and parents grew up really tough, and that's why they did all that. You know, my grandmother always had extra in the freezer, or you know, we was always we we had a big garden. I. I thought my dad was just crazy. Like, you know, and but they always grew what they always did was if they had a garden, it was extra big. If they had whatever, it was extra, and they spread it out. There was eight of them. Yeah. Kids. And they would always, you know, hear, you know, share, share with each other. So yeah. But anyway, uh let let we've been an hour and a half. Let's let's get off here. I gotta get up early in the morning. I appreciate yep. this has been fun. We need to Oh yeah, we, need to plan we, something. we didn't we didn't do no bigfoot tonight, but hey, we we got talk. Maybe we wasn't putting nobody to sleep. They ain't burning well, burning torches, well, and throwing pitchforks at us. Well, another thing too, we both know um, there's there's stuff we we have to tell around the fire. Yep, yep. We think you know there's a lot of stuff. I was like, man, I want to tell him that, but I can't. I have to wait till we in, in person, but. Um, yeah, hey, I, I appreciate all y'all. What up, uh, <laughs> Roger? What what days are you off work? Uh, most of the time Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Um, now we we've got a vacation time coming up. I don't know what we're gonna do, but uh, it's around. Uh, let's see. No, it's two weeks after. I think Spencer's trip. But I had talked to him about maybe a Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And then. Uh, well, look, I told Misty, and she's in here still, I guess. But uh, <laughs> look at Joe Parker. Joe Parker, yeah. you can't say nothing. You're the one who calls me at 2 o'clock in the morning and talks till daylight. <laughs> oh, man. I like, man, I like old Joe now. That's my buddy. He will, man, him. Me and him be up like we are the night solving world problems. But anyway, what I was going to tell you, Roger, is uh, how long how long does it take you to get to Decatur? I can be in I can be in Priceville in, in an hour or five maybe. Okay, it takes me about to get to Priceville. Take me about forty minutes. But look, as far as I know, I mean, looks like it's still game on. Uh, Misty's aunt Sherry and Donna and Mister Jim, her uncle Sherry's husband. Misty and her daughter Layla, they're gonna be down here. Man, we if we can just get loose like one evening, whether you want to come down here Saturday or Sunday and meet up with us, we'll all cook something to eat, get something to eat, or we may even meet y'all in we may meet y'all in Decatur or something. Let me let me see what uh Peyton's doing. so like a Sunday evening this Sunday. Yeah. Let me see what he's doing and see what uh I, I got your I got your number here. Yeah. And maybe we can run down for a couple hours. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't care if it's Saturday or Sunday. Y'all y'all are off. Got time to drive. Just I'll I'll give you that address. Y'all just meet us down here. I mean, I plan on doing some cooking anyway. I mean what, I'd, like to have, I'd like to fry up some old nasty fish one night. I mean I don't know if y'all eat fish. What about what about uh Saturday? What are y'all doing? Because um, I know what he's gonna wanna do. He's gonna go gonna be back where he can watch a ball game late that night, but but Saturday, day, yeah. Well, now I know I don't know about the following Saturday. I know this Saturday they won't be here till if they leave up there around Tennessee, around probably say they leave at nine, they'll be here by about three three thirty. So they won't be here till later, okay. Later, let, so let me talk to him and Heather about uh, maybe uh Sunday after church. 
if that would put us getting there around three or four, might stay a couple hours. Well, yeah, I mean, here's the deal. I mean, if y'all left, yeah, I mean, I don't know how long it take you when you left church, but yeah, y'all, y'all, you should be able to be sitting right here in this room with me in two hours or less, yeah. Probably. Yeah. probably not a whole lot over hour and a half. All right. So we'll, I'll see. I definitely want to, but uh, we got to make, I know he, he was like, I said something about it to him about going, he said, well, make sure it ain't a ball game. <laughs> now if yeah. they lose a couple, he'll be on, he, he won't care, but <laughs> tell him, tell him they've come Tennessee, they all volunteers anyway. He needs to just, Give up on that for a weekend. We'll let him watch it on TV. We, um, that sounds good. We'll we'll see. I I would like to. Uh, I would I would really like to take a day off during the week too, if I could. But I'm gonna I'll see what we can do. See what you can do. You, you I, gotta, I, I want you to come down here where we can all sit down. And you can meet Sherry and Misty and all of us. And, yeah, that'd I, be fun. Yeah, I'll yeah. get we. You gonna keep the boogers off of us? Yeah, I hope so. Um, We're going to the college try, the redneck try. What about November 4th? I'll talk talk to you. I I think, I don't know if y'all are doing anything, but I'll talk to you about it. I'll I'll, I'll add your your phone number. Did I text you? No, you hadn't. I had my number and shoot me a text and I can save yours. All right. All right, yeah, we need to. It's going to get squatchy. Yeah, look, Joe Parker, Joe Parker what, it was like 1 o'clock the other night. I was on the on um, picture message or whatever with Joe Parker, and I, I was in there boiling boiled eggs at 1 o'clock in the morning. I, was <laughs> hey, I, I do stuff like that. Um, I'll jump up and start cooking 9 o'clock at night. What are you doing? Well, I, I'm going to be in a hurry in the morning. I'm going to cook, cook some breakfast, so I can jump up and grab it. Heat it up in the microwave and head out the door. You know, I'm at five o'clock in the morning. You know, I don't do it every morning, but I did. I did yesterday morning. It was rough. Yeah. All right. I guess man, we'll tell everybody hi, or bye, and man, we'll talk to you soon. All right. And sorry about the y'all, everybody. I'm sorry about the mess ups. I'm learning this, and every bit of that was my fault earlier. So well, we had we had Joe Parker and Misty, and we had Crystal stayed with us. Thank you, Crystal. Everybody hanging out with us. And big love to everybody. There's blue eyed. <laughs> Thank y'all. See y'all, y'all. Sleep well. Now if I can figure out how to end this thing. <laughs> Leave studio. There you go. Bye, folks.